Hello everybody, it's been a while since I've worked on this. But I've gotten a number of questions from folks about the Xbox controller and analog joysticks. So hopefully we can catch up a little bit on this. One thing I'd recommend if you have the device is to find and download the Xbox adaptive controller specification. This is probably a year or two old. This might be a newer one, but here's what's important. These diagrams for how the different jacks work. So if you're making your own switches and your own digital joysticks or analog joysticks, this document lays out examples and for like the analog joystick here's how things are connected trigger devices joystick devices here's joystick devices x and y really useful so make sure to get a copy of that all right <clears throat> two ways of getting analog sticks into this device one is usb which <coughs> Excuse me. I've done another video on with my little custom controller things that I made with PS2 joysticks. Now these plug into the side, the USB of the adaptive controller. All right. Here's the, the challenge for those of you who aren't super electronic-y. Inside this device is the joystick, which is simple. The challenging part is that you need to have a little microcontroller. And what this little microcontroller does, it's an Arduino, uh, it's known as a Pro Mini, also known as the Leonardo. It can appear to a Windows or other machine as a heads up device. Well, no, not heads up device, human interface device, HID, H-I-D. So what's a HID in Microsoft World? It is a joystick, a keyboard, a mouse, or whatever. So with this, you could do USB connection. There's code that's written and loaded on this microcontroller and you have a lot of control. Pretty cool, but well, not good if you're not into Arduino, right? There is another way. The adaptive controller has inputs X1, X2 for those joysticks. So left joystick, right joystick. It also has triggers, but I'm, I'm not going to worry about the triggers right now. So what's, what does that mean to us? Well, from an analog controller standpoint, you could use these very inexpensive PS2, PlayStation 2 style joysticks that you can get on Amazon for like a pack of 10 for very little money. And these are what you'd normally see. So this is a great analog and remember the difference between the analog sticks and the digital digital it's like the old atari or the old nes where you got left right up down it's either you're going up or you're not versus the analog stick it is proportional so as you know you push it far and it does far you push it a little bit it does a little bit so like the games where you're looking around and everything of course you're sitting there with the two joysticks Oh, I'm looking around, right? So these little sticks are inexpensive and their little cap comes off if you wanted to. So you have your, you can attach something to it. It's already, most of them already have stuff pre-soldered for the different connections. All right. Let's talk about analog sticks. Analog sticks a digital stick is yes or no, on or off. An analog stick works differently. There are little things called potentiometers, 
which they vary their value depending on how you're moving it. So that's how it knows how close or far, left or right, up or down, you're doing it. it requires more wires. So you see on this board, and they're nicely marked on this one, you have a ground, five volt, X, Y, and switch. Okay, so a potentiometer, normally on a switch, you'll see you gotta have ground or power and then the switch. With a potentiometer, you need ground power and kind of the data line. Think of the X as your data line. So you need at a minimum three, which is cool. Okay. So the way that our good friends handle this is with a four, one, two, three, four position plug. These are the standard eighth inch plugs. And thank goodness Amazon sells these with these little screw terminals. So, oh my goodness, you don't have to learn how to solder, which is fantastic. So the first thing I did was I, on the device, on this little adapter, it has left, right, voltage, and power. So I took a multimeter and I mapped out what goes where. Okay. So I found L goes to the tip, R goes to one of the rings, V goes to another ring, and V voltage. G ground goes to the uh, sleeve. So in these con these uh, plugs, and this man, this goes back to old Bell telephone stuff. Tip, ring, ring, and oh, now I forgot the term. Boy, I see, see how old and confusing it is. So. You need one of these, one, two, three, four, and luckily Amazon sells this. You only need this if you're doing analog sticks on this, okay? All right, put this away. If you have questions about that, shoot me an email, I'll always answer it. Other analog sticks, uh, there's these little tiny Kind of thumbsticks originally, I think, on the uh, PlayStation Portable, showing my age here. I think that's the last device I bought. Same idea, left, right, up, down. Purchase those. If you're going to do that, you can also purchase breakout boards, but that requires soldering. If you need help with that, let me know. So how do we connect this thing? Well, when I looked at the diagram, I said, okay, left, right, okay, this is how it maps to the little plugs I need to pull in, but there's, I looked at the specifications, again, your handy dandy Xbox Debective controller input specification document. And I see x-axis, y-axis, ground, and voltage. So the specification for Microsoft says that the, the ring, oh, see, I remember it now. The ring is not ground, but it's voltage. And what my adapter says is voltage is actually ground. All right, so got a flip-flop, x and y, hooray. Now, we have, oh, let me grab this. So what I have done is I've got one of those lovely connectors and I have, this, I'm using a ribbon cable because I'm trying to keep things nice and clean or as clean as I can for this prototype. There's two wires 
So in my case, it's red or orange. The colors do not matter. They're informational. The red and the orange are do X and Y. Green ground and yellow positive. And again, because my specs in my document said that voltage and ground are switched, I flipped and twisted those wires. This fifth wire is for the switch which we are not going to use that's a switch if you push down the uh, this particular port will not recognize it it only recognizes the four so what happens is this gets plugged into either x1 or x2 depending if you want to go left or right so i've plugged it in and some of these things you really kind of need to seat them you gotta press them in kind of hard Oh, what's this thing? So what I've done here is I've crimped a DuPont connector that will plug into here so that I can easily remove and test different setups. I also have mounted the joystick assembly on a 3D printed piece. This is completely optional, but I do it because I've got a 3D printer. So I printed out something like this, right? And then I've screwed it to a piece of scrap wood and I've screwed the, I just use wood screws to go to the scrap wood and then some machine screws to hold the joystick in place. These are uh, M3 eight millimeter screws. Use what you got. I also, as you can see, I took the cap off because normally they come like this, right? Took the cap off and I glued a 3 16th inch piece of brass tubing that I had on hand to it because I wanted to have a bigger knob. And then I've got this three threaded knob here. Again, if you don't have a 3D printer, ping pong ball, uh, tennis ball, uh, you could use whatever you have around. Don't make it too heavy though, otherwise it won't recenter itself. See, this one is kind of heavy, so if you press it out to here, it doesn't auto center. If you do it a little bit, it's fine. So, so in this case, if somebody had limited mobility, they could put their palm on it. And so you have the connections. You have to do ground, power, X, and Y. And wire that up however you want to wire it. And then it goes into this, which goes into X1 or X2 on the Xbox controller. Now, something I found you're going to have to fiddle with depending on this joystick I found I actually had to flip X and Y. So what I originally marked down on my piece of paper, X axis is the tip, I flipped it. So that way I know, and I'm, I test it through my very handy dandy HTML5 hand gamepad tester. I didn't write that, but somebody did and it's fantastic. HTML the number five gamepad.com it tests all sorts of game pads it's really excellent uh, I use it for all my testing so I've got this I got the connector here and let me show it a little better you could solder this if you wanted to I used crimp connectors which means I can plug and unplug do 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 and then that goes right into the back. Seat it well, and I'm taking a look at my HTML gamepad tester software, and it's fine. If the axis is off, try flipping the wires, the, the X and Y. That's what I would recommend. These little analog things are a little wonky. I think that's it for the moment. I will have more. Thank you for watching.